And welcome to your 2023 Ironman Lake Placid course preview. The swim for Lake Placid in 2023 is again in beautiful Mirror Lake, a calm, pristine lake in the heart of Lake Placid, serving as one of the best Ironman swims in the world. No kidding. The water temperature typically in the high 60s, low 70s. It is two loops, and after the first loop, you have a chance to um, get a water break, if you like, before you jump back in the lake and do it again. And all buoys will be on your right. Wendy, this is a course that you've done. I've been there to cover it as a reporter, and it is a spectacular location to swim. Yes, this is probably next to Ironman Coeur d'Alene. Ironman Lake Placid Water is pristine and beautiful. And it definitely, for me, is the easiest course to stay on track because there's a rope underneath the water that you can see and swim over, so you definitely stay on course. And the first time I did this race was in 2002, and I'm pretty sure I wore a wetsuit. It was wetsuit legal. And then the next time I did this race was 2011, and I wore my swimsuit because the water was above 78 degrees. And so, you know, temperatures are going to vary depending on the climate and how much snow they get that year and how much snow melt they're going to have in the lake. So I would definitely be prepared for a wetsuit and or non-wetsuit swim. I'd lean towards the size of a, side of having a wetsuit preparation, but there it could be a non-wetsuit swim. And this is a really straightforward with the buoys on your right. Uh, it couldn't be more easy to follow with a straight out, take a right, come back, and then come on shore briefly, and then make your way back into the water. Any strategies on how to approach a swim where you have to come out of the water and then go back into the water? Well, going from horizontal to vertical can create some dizziness in some people, depending on their blood pressure. And so you want to be careful of that. I've never done a race where I've had an aid station on the swim portion. So if you are out there long and you feel like you're going to need some hydration, or I don't know if they're going to have any gels or anything, make sure you practice with that. I know sometimes I've heard advice of people who need um, nutrition, calories on their swim course, they can hide their gel pack or whatever in their wetsuit or in their speed suit or some sort of kit that they can easily be able to pull that out while they're swimming. And I know people who have done that. And and also I wanted to mention the years I've done this race, it's always been a mass swim start. Ironman has grown. And when I did this race in 2011, I was front and center and I looked back and I couldn't believe they were going to fit in that amount of athletes in this what I consider smaller lake venue. And so now Ironman has gone to the rolling start. So it's a, it's, it's safer. It's less congestion. It's, it's easy for everyone now to get over that rope and follow the rope line. I think it's yep. sh shallow enough that I think you can even probably <laughs> pull on it. So definitely gives everyone the opportunity to do that. And, and just entering the water in a stress-free environment um, is over, always helpful. I don't recall that I was gonna, being able to warm up before my wave or the start. And so, you know, make sure you have some open water swim experience before this race because you're probably not going to be able to swim in the lake before your, before race day. Now, coming out of the water, I know we're going to talk about the bike course, but coming out of the water, the transition run is longer than usual. It's not your typical find your, find your bike, mm -hmm. get the people to take off your wetsuit, and you're good to go. This is a long run. So there's a couple of options. You can have someone take off your suit right then and there, and you can carry it over your shoulder, or you can run the entire length, leaving the swim area, running across the street, back into the arena, and then go to the transition. What, what What's the pros and cons of each? Um, I If there's wetsuit strippers, I always say take advantage of the wetsuit stripper. Um, and it's a fun job. If you're not racing, it's a fun job to volunteer for. I've done that a couple times in Boulder. And so wetsuit strippers are usually one of the favorite of all volunteers. So once you get out of the water, there's going to be people, you know, kind of holding their hand up just to let you know they're available. You just kind of, you know, maybe take the wetsuit off your shoulders, lie on the ground, put your legs up, and they just tear it off your body. And then you run with it. That is definitely 
the best option, I think, for anyone. I don't know why you wouldn't take that option because if you don't have a wetsuit stripper, then you're running and as you're running, you're trying to, you know, take the wetsuit off your shoulder, you're running with it down at your waist and then you get to your transition area and you still have to pull it off your body and there's a procedure I'll include, I've included a video within the plan of, of demonstrating how to take a wetsuit off. And then it kind of probably creates a lot more time. Could take a couple minutes. I've I've struggled taking off wetsuits myself. So it could take a couple more minutes. If it's just a, a day, a pro to running in your wetsuit is if it's a day that's extremely cold, maybe you want to keep that wetsuit on until you get to transition because it's going to keep your body warm. If it's a day that obviously is extremely hot, you're going to want to get that wetsuit. Maybe not even have that wetsuit. Might not even be an option, but you want to get that wetsuit off as quickly as possible and definitely take advantage of the wetsuit volunteers. Your two loop 2023 Ironman Lake Placid bike course. Um, again, beautiful. The location here with in the, in the Adirondacks, um, spectacular. You can see the new lodge at Mount, Vo, uh, Mount Van Hovenberg, the ski jumps, the white face mountain, and of course the famed Olympic center, which was home to the 1980 Miracle on the Ice event. So this one here, there it's you are basically you're a big circular loop there's no out and backs per se there's a couple one or two u-turns but other than that it's just ride 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 how do you approach this course what's the the tips for the athletes doing this course well you're going to get on your bike and you're pretty much going to start climbing right away and it's a fairly long climb and so you want to make sure you have the right the proper gearing you want to just kind of settle into an effort that you can sustain for a long time up this climb and then there's this long, you have a long climb up, you have a long climb down, descent into Keene. The first year I did this race, there was a lot of drafting going on and a, a pack passed me and I got connected, my handlebars connected to some other guys and I was able to push them out of my way, but I thought I was going to go down and I thought my race was going to be over. So be careful on the whole bike course, but especially the descents. Because, you know, you know, there's always drafting going on. You just never know what type of experience other athletes have on the course. So you can only control what your experience is. So be careful on that long descent. Other than that, it's a really beautiful course. Both years I've done it, it rained, usually on the same part of the course. It, there's going to be some rain, misty rain. It was always warm enough that it never made me cold. But be prepared for unpredictable weather. And... There's this, the, the next few sets of climbs are called baby bear, mama bear, and papa bear. And that's just the nature of um, how long those climbs are. And if you don't pace the bike, the bike correctly, those little bear climbs at the end of the second loop can really be, <laughs> can really destroy you mentally if you don't save energy to get over them. And so you're going to have a chance to experience them the first loop, get a feel of what they're like. And so, so you'll have a better idea of how to approach them the second loop. And your 2023 Ironman Lake Placid run course, again, two loops, much like the bike course in terms of loops. And this is a kind of an out and back, real straightforward. Um, it's going to challenge you as you take a tour through the city center. You run past lots of cheering fans on Mill Hill and then back into the Mirror Lake area before you finish your day at the oval and that oval that's pretty cool you come around the full track and come into the finish line you can anticipate you can hear the voices of the announcers and so on uh from your recollection and run of this one here it's a uh, just a nice big u-shape loop isn't it yeah it's a great course i think i remember seeing spectators on every corner kind of along the whole route it's very hilly so back in 2002 more in my early days of triathlon i wasn't prepared for these hills i lived in colorado but i didn't train on the hills and so the next time i went in 2011 my training was changed my fitness level my experience level was obviously different but i made sure i was more prepared for the hilly nature and the challenge of this course i think you know, even for me, I'm really strong climber now, but the nature of any race course that has hills is going to be challenging for anyone. And so you definitely want to incorporate throughout your training plan, hilly courses, even in the beginning, if you have a chance to run hills, whether it's an easy, moderate or hard, short or long run, you should include hills in your training plan. 
And the average uh, temperature on the day is around the lower 60s, typically even in July in Lake Placid for that runny hills course. So, you know, if you're like the coolness of the weather, this might be a, a decent place to, to run, even though it does have hills. Yeah, it's definitely the temperature of the whole day is is very suitable. It makes it kind of an easier course because you don't have extreme cold or extreme hot in any year that I've ever heard of in Lake Placid. And Lake Placid, I believe, is the oldest Ironman North America event that's still going on. So that that's pretty cool to um, have, have able to participate in it. Um, and even though it's cooler, you still want to stay hydrated. You still want to follow your nutrition plan. You want to make sure you follow that in training. And so, you know, race day, what and how often you're going to eat and drink. 